And it's seeing no questions, I'll see you later. Um, do you stand for the comment you made this week that this is calling for lockdown for those lucky enough to work? Yeah, no, sure. I, I did make some comments at the uh, at, at the convention earlier this week, and I, I do stand by those uh, comments. But I, I would maybe clarify: uh, in no way was I, um, you know, indicating that or, or disparaging in any way the people that are going to work each and every day on the front lines, whether that be in healthcare, whether that be in, in the front lines uh, throughout our community, um, or all of the people. And there's many people that do have the opportunity to work from home. What I was pointing out is uh, very often. Those that are, are calling for broad shutdowns of our economy and our community often do have the opportunity to work from home. And I, I maybe should have added earlier this week, and I would add it now, the, the, there is another uh, group um, that is uh, raising you know, another concern throughout this, what is becoming a very divisive conversation of you know, we need to shut down more, more of our economy, more of our communities versus uh, another group of, of folks that are, are asking us to open it up. And I... You know, I sign uh, letters and correspondence uh, each and every day that I'm here, and I see that about one for one, shut, shut things down, open things up. And, and uh, th there is this other side that is asking us to open up um, broad sectors of our economy, and I would say that that is uh, without a full understanding of what the impacts of that would actually do to those very frontline workers that are in healthcare and in our communities um, that are out uh, keeping our family and servicing our family and, and providing the services um, in our communities that we that are essential that we actually need and so I, I should have added those comments on Monday I'm adding them uh, today and I think this is a good time for all of us in the province to just take a step back understand uh, the balance that we are trying to achieve as a provincial government here in controlling the spread of COVID-19 but also providing the opportunity for as many people to carry on with uh, you know with their with their employment but also with the, th the, the, the things in their community that, uh, that we want to carry on with as well. And we should never forget, even with the measures that are in place, we have lost 20,000 jobs in our province over the course of the last number of months. And we, we need those back. We want those back when we find our way through this COVID-19 pandemic. And we're going we're gonna to do everything we can to uh, ensure those jobs return. I'm failing to understand when you speak of the day that have the opportunity to stay home, who are you talking about? It's a lot, that's a lot of us here. That's you, that's me. We all have the opportunity to stay home. And some of us don't much like it. I'd rather be at work and stay <laughs> home all stay here too. Yeah, yeah, and then, yeah. The yeah, and I, I've done a little bit of both. I have worked uh, some from home and I've worked a fair amount uh, uh, from Regina here as well. And, and as has our caucus and our and our cabinet. Um, I know one in particular. It was a statement that I had made uh, in general, um, in general comments that I had heard, and I won't get into uh, the particulars. But I, but I will say that there, there is in Saskatchewan, like there is across Canada, like there is south of the border, like there is in many areas of the world, what is, uh, you know, developing to be a, a conversation that has, you know, very two distinct sides. And I, I mentioned about the the correspondence material that I have. And I think it is incumbent on all of us to understand and respect um, the, the, you know, the, 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 how we have tried to balance um, the lives and livelihoods, the, the, the opportunity for us to carry on um, over the course of what is allowed 11 months, uh, community activities, carry on most of the, most of the jobs uh, that we have uh, here in Saskatchewan. And there was job numbers out this week that, that said that Saskatchewan has the lowest unemployment rate, which is a positive. But we also need to understand that, that we're not going to just open this up. That would be entirely disrespectful to those folks that are going to work every day, are on the front lines, treating patients that may or may not have COVID. And so all of us need to just take a little bit of a step back and just understand you know, the, the balance that we're trying to achieve here in Saskatchewan and in fairness, other premiers across the nation and I, I think people across North America. <clears throat> I hear doctors, the, the 400 doctors or so that wrote to you and said, maybe you need to, to take a second look at what measures can be placed. I'm hearing people from your teachers. I'm hearing people from uh, right. the nurses. Those are the they that I'm hearing that yeah. being critical. And they yeah. Listen, it's very easy to go out and say, um, we need more measures. Um, we need to introduce more measures. We've all heard Dr. Shahab talk about um, the fact that... I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to take my advice from, from Dr. Shahab, and we've all heard him in, uh, in uh, our media veils to say, um, there, there's no one area of society or, or a workplace where 
we have a, a large number of infections. It's a sprinkling across the province and it's a sprinkling across various sectors of our community. So the, the, the measures that we're talking about next would be essentially shutting down the, all of the businesses and shutting down our schools um, and shutting down the remaining um, little bit of, of uh, youth athletics that we have, the hockey, the lacrosse and the soccer. Um, we, we, there, there, there really is no evidence uh, to shut down any one of those sectors of our community, of our economy. So the next step when we talk about additional measures is essentially shutting everything down. Um, there would be tremendous impacts from that. Impacts in the way of, yeah, of mental COVID health with, with, with yeah. pardon me? Now COVID did that. Yeah. It was ugly. It was miserable. Right. Some For of us suffered. I couldn't go to mom's funeral. Mm -hmm. But the fact of the matter is they did that. Things shut down, their numbers are going down. So you can't sit here and say that that doesn't work. It does work. It's painful. It's, it's bad for the economy, but they're actually showing kind of good results. Right? And our numbers are, are, are coming down as well with the measures that we have in place, which are not insignificant. And so, you know, I, I would say that what's happening in Saskatchewan, due to what Saskatchewan people uh, are doing each and every day, um, is, is driving the numbers down here in the province as well. We're down under 200 on our, our, active, case, uh, our active case rate now, which is, is still, yes, too high, but it is down substantially from where it was just a few weeks ago. But isn't the, isn't the short term pain bringing down the caseload faster, which is what's happening Yeah. So, so the, the, what do you mean by short term pain? Short term is a relative, uh, a relative term. Most of the, of the uh, wide sector, uh, shutdowns that I've seen, whether they be in Canada or other areas of the world, have been in excess of three months. Um, we are driving the numbers down, we, like we did in December, with significant measures that were introduced early in December. Uh, they worked then. Yes, we had a post-holiday bump in our numbers, but they've been driven down uh, significantly since Christmas as well. And that, The measures that we have in place, um, if we were to do the broad-based shutdown, all of hockey, all of, of, of uh, lacrosse, all of soccer, all of youth athletics totally, not just the competitive games, close our schools um, and then shut down the additional businesses across this province, um, there, would be, there would be widespread impacts from that in families and economic impacts. Um, there are economic impacts and family impacts to what we're doing today. They would be uh, much greater if we were to, uh, to do the broad-based shutdown that you were referring to that has occurred in other areas. Our numbers are coming down, so what, what would, I guess my question would be, why, if, if what you were doing is working, um, why would you change? Well, well, well you yeah, had 250 more introduced it, that might be one reason. Like, I'm not being facetious here, they're, they're nasty, but the right. fact of the matter is when, the, when you had introduced the uh, uh, new measures on December 12th, I think, mm -hmm. there was 250 less deaths. That's mm -hmm. probably one good reason uh, to basically seriously consider the need to not do this because that is yeah. a big problem. That's triple what we had before. And, and that, is, that is a good reason as to why we institute the very stringent measures that we did on, on December the 12th. Listen, um, from the beginning, we have said we are constantly going to ensure throughout this pandemic, and this is a virus, um, that we are able to preserve the capacity that we have in our healthcare facilities. We have done that throughout. Uh, we've been watching uh, those numbers throughout. Our numbers in our hospitals are starting to decrease. Yes, admittedly, we'd like to see them decreasing sooner, um, but they are starting to decrease. Our daily case counts are coming down. Um, what we are doing is working in much the same way that it was working in, in December. And to be fair, not everyone is calling for every single part of society to come to a screeching halt, as you're characterizing, but why not look at bars or restaurants? Because again, we are still seeing outbreaks tied to bars and drinks. Mean, lots are following the rules, but it's the select few that aren't. Right. Why not look at more measures that way? Because that's what a lot of the doctors and nurses are calling for. Mm -hmm. Well, bars are essentially operating as restaurants today. They're all under the same uh, rules as far as sitting forward at a table and when they are, are closing. So there's no difference between a bar and a restaurant. As we said, and I would just go back to Dr. Shahab's comments, is, is well, one, we have increased enforcement in that sector in particular so that those uh, bad actors, those that are not following the, uh, the public health guidelines that are in place are um, being charged and we have uh, published many of their names over the course of the last few weeks. Um, second is, uh, do, uh, to, uh, with respect to Dr. Shahab's comments, is there really is no one sector 
that is overwhelmingly um, you know, providing a, an influx of numbers uh, across the province. And so the next step of, of, uh, of, of measures would be those broad-based measures where you, sh you shut everything down and slow everything down. That would be bars, restaurants, any retail uh, businesses would disproportionately hurt small business in Saskatchewan, like it has in other areas of, uh, our, of our nation and the world. It would mean you would close schools, which have operated, uh, for the most part, I would say, uh, remarkably well throughout this pandemic, and a credit to our teachers and school divisions for the effort that they've made. And it would mean you would take away um, the, the last of the youth ath athletics that we, opportunities that we have. There's consequences to all of that, in the way of job loss, in the way of, of, uh, of impacts on our youth. Um, in the way of impacts on, on families. And so, um, you, you know, without evidence that there's one sector of the economy that is providing an inordinate number of, of infections, of COVID infections, the next step is to shut everything so down. Would, so would because it seems to be close to keep getting moved a little bit. Dr. Shahab originally talked about 150, then 200, then 250, and maybe 300. Now, we're obviously below those numbers, thankfully, yep. and, and, and you're right about that. But can you give us a better idea as to what would cause you to believe a significant amount of uh, uh, restrictions can be lifted on the 19th, or what would numbers that would suggest that uh, we should increase uh, restrictions on the 19th if we things turn around and all of a sudden we see more cases or more deaths? What, what is the measure right now? Yeah. Is it 300? Uh, yesterday is it 250? We don't really understand anymore. Yeah, that, that's not that's actually not a question that I can answer uh, today. That's a question that would, you know, I will rely on the advice that Dr. Shahab uh, provides Dr. the Shahab government Shahab in in the conversation leading up to the 19th, um, which we haven't started that conversation as of yet. I suspect we will uh, be even this this week, possibly tomorrow, start that that conversation of what he's thinking. Um, any additional recommendations or any uh, retreat from any recommendations that we have um, might be. I, I can say the general conversation that we have had um, as we've approached these dates uh, before, because we've had these measures on for a, a number of, of weeks now, um, has been around the, the household family gatherings. I don't know um, where Dr. Shahab's uh, head is at with respect to what he's thinking about on that on the 19th, but that conversation is going to start as we get closer to that date. What do you think? Myself? Yeah, when you talk about, you've made it clear that you hope to lessen the household only rule. So, what would you want to lose? Yeah, I, I, I don't have an opinion on whether we're there yet or not. I honestly would very much take uh, his advice on, on uh, you know, where his head at is with respect to that, is with respect to anything else that he might be thinking, and we may know more in a day or two on what exactly Dr. Shahab is thinking. He's taking in, uh, you know, in, in a lot more data into his, uh, his re recommendation making process than, than, than I am. Um, you had written a story, I think, yesterday on, on some of, you know, what are the actual community numbers in our province, and, and in fairness, that would correlate across the nation. And, and that's the type of information and modeling information that, that Dr. Shahab will be looking at as he formulates uh, his recommendations. So um, we have talked earlier that that would be a, a good place to um, to begin if we're able. I don't know what the metrics are on when he will say we would be able to do um, such a such a thing as that. Um, a lot of my focus recently has been uh, with with the other premiers and the prime minister on doing what we can to on the other side of this conversation, which is trying to um, increase our access to vaccines, um, which is ultimately our way through uh, this pandemic. We're really at a stage, and I, I think this week. Is, uh, is an opportunity for us to realize there, there's really three things for us um, to, to focus on and to think about over the course of the next while. And I'll, I'll just run through them from, from back to forward. Our phase two vaccination plan, which was released this week, is an age-based plan. It's a plan that's based on, on age for a reason. Um, those elderly have the worst outcomes when they, uh, when they, when they uh, contract COVID. And it's a plan that that allows us to run uh, many thousands of doses a day and many tens of thousands of doses a week so we can get to many people in the province as quickly as possible. That plan's a ways away. We're in phase one right now. We're only about 10% or slightly better done our phase one vaccination plan, which is our long-term care residents, a number of health uh, care folks, as well as those people over 70. So we have a, you know, a, a, a number of vaccines that we need to get through before we even get to phase two. So we're really focused in on procuring vaccines um, in this first quarter and maybe even a little beyond to get through that phase one group. 
that that lack of access to vaccines at this point, I think really brings us back to what we all need to be doing today. And that is really paying attention to the public health orders that Dr. Shahab has in place and whatever he will bring forward um, likely next week in advent uh, um, of, of the 19th. The, 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 the rules of, of, of the game, if you will, are changing as we find our way through this. We have new variants that are arriving in Canada and, and new variants now that are arriving in Saskatchewan and that may impact some of of Dr. Shahab's decision. I think uh, for, all the, for all of us, uh, what's important to remember is given that phase two is a ways off, phase one, we're only 10% through that, that vaccination phase. It's really imperative for the next number of months anyway, that we really pay attention to the public health orders that are in place um, as much as we ever have and ensure that we're able to continue uh, bringing our numbers down for all the reasons that Murray mentioned. Um, bringing those numbers down so that we can we can manage through these last number of months and ultimately until such a time between now and September when the, the you know the the mass the mass the vast majority of the province can have access to those vaccines. No, no, I don't think it added to the division. Really? No. This is coming up. Actually, that, that, that comment actually caused people to issue a petition to petition you in relation to that. So I don't really understand. Okay. I, I just finished. I just finished in the last two days signing 16 books of, of signing that um, I think speak to the divisions that are that are here. And as I said, about half of those want us to lock things down. About half of those want us to 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 open things up. And I, I, I read each and every one of those. And you know, there's there's a lot of passion in many of of, of those letters. And I would say that uh, the comments that I had made uh, Monday had addressed one side of that. I make some comments today that I think address the other side. And those that want us to open up prematurely, want us to open up before it's safe to do so, really should stop and think about, you know, the risk that that places on on our frontline healthcare workers, on our frontline workers that are, um, you know, on the very front lines of, of our community, uh, providing services uh, that we all require. We need to, as I say, just take a, a step back and, and uh, you know, respect where where we are all coming from. Do you recognize that yep. there were people that were sincerely offended by that comment? And they were sincerely. It wasn't just the usual partisans that I see on your Twitter feed and I see on mine. There are people who sit back and say, I'm doing the best I can. I'm following the orders. I'm doing what Premier Mo and Dr. Shahab told me to do, which was stay right. home. And you're telling me that I'm wrong for doing that. No. Because, well, that's how they're yeah, no, no, what I said was, uh, and I, I think I, I mentioned this in my opening comment, um, you know, in no way was I, was I indicating that all people that have that opportunity to stay at home are advocates to, to shut down uh, the remaining parts of, of our economy that are operating today. But all too often, all too often... Yeah. ...about the division, I'm just kind of wondering, I guess why we're here today, because if you're not speaking about the concern about... Uh, the division that, that's been created, mm -hmm. it's, it's a little hard to understand why you... Well, I think I have spoken to the divisions that, that are there, and they're not just in Saskatchewan. They're in no way unique to Saskatchewan. We're seeing them across the nation. We're seeing them south of the border and around the world. And, and uh, you know, and in no way was I indicating that all of those folks that have the opportunity to work from home are advocating for a broad-based uh, shutdown of our, of our economy and our communities. However, um, those that are advocating for that often do have that opportunity to work from home. They aren't actually impacted by uh, the result of that decision. As I said, we've, we've lost 20,000 jobs in this, in this province throughout this. That's not true, sir. Have you noticed people who are advocating for more restrictions? How do I know that? Uh, I just, over the course of the last number of months, between the correspondence that I've received, between um, the, the, the media stories that I see that you write, and, you know, it's, it's not directed at anyone in particular. It's directed at, at the fact that, and, and this is maybe, uh, you, you know, how, how I meant it to be directed, is we all need to take that step back and just understand that when you're advocating for, for that broader shutdown, what you are advocating for is some of those folks do not have that opportunity, is for their job to go away for an indeter indeterminate amount of time. Most of these shutdowns have lasted in excess of three months. That's a substantial amount of time for many, 20,000 people too many so far, um, to not have access to their employment. Pardon me? We all face the risk of sickness and death. which, sir? We all face the risk of sickness and death and pandemic. We may not all face the same risk of job loss. But how is it fair for you to say that those who have the opportunity 
to work from home and are choosing to follow public health advice, that somehow their opinion is less valid. I wasn't indicating that uh, that at all. I was in no way questioning whether it was fair for them to make. I was questioning whether they had properly thought out what the impacts of what they are advocating for actually are to so many others that don't have that opportunity. But if they're thinking about the virus, why should they be thinking about jobs? We're talking about a, those people usually are talking from the point of we need to cut down our public interaction. So you're saying they should be thinking yeah. about the economy. And, and my point is there's, there's many of these folks uh, that are working today and doing so very safely. We talked earlier about restaurants where the vast majority are operating in a very safe manner. There's a few bad actors that we are trying and attempting to clamp down on that may not be. Um, and that light sprinkling of infections throughout the economy, there's no one place where uh, the majority of infections are coming from. Um, we all need to understand that when you are advocating for something, those consequences might be much more severe to others uh, across across uh, your community or across uh, across the province than than maybe you realize. Um, the you know the youth athletics is a thing that I answer many many letters on. Um, whether whatever it may be, hockey, soccer, um, school sports, for example, have not been have not been uh, operational throughout the season. Uh, there is there's impacts to that. And to take away the little bit of recreational activity that we have um, for our youth, there's going to be larger impacts to that. And we need to consider all of that. That's why we have tried. That's why uh, I think in fairness, Dr. Shahab, I will not try to speak for Dr. Shahab, has tried to strike this balanced and measured approach of protecting lives, yes, and protecting livelihoods. Doctors, telling you that right now, sir. Pardon me? What are you saying to frontline doctors? And there's many frontline doctors that have been sharp critics of you, but these are doctors that are working right. in the ER, are working in mm -hmm. ICUs, and they're the ones who are often tweeting or writing tweeting right. saying yeah. that we need something different, if not an all out uh, circuit breaker lockdown, yeah. some changes to policy. What are you saying to them? Because those are some of the people that are interpreting your comments as being directed at them. It was not directed at them. Uh, there are also many in the medical field that would take an op opposing view that we should do everything we can to keep our schools open, that, that uh, we should do everything we can to keep things as normal. Absolutely there is. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, like, I'm not, I'm not going to argue with you on that, Murray, but it, but it is factual. There, there's many individuals, whether they be physicians or other people in, in, our, in our communities and society. And there is doctors as well, yes. Pardon me? Yeah. Uh, I just wanted to ask first of all, Some. you talked about the importance of stronger enforcement, and you talked about that before. Yet at this point, according to the last update we got, there's only been about 40 tickets issued. The overwhelming majority of them have been either dismissed or still remaining. Right. Them. I'm wondering, isn't this just more talk than action, and what more do we need yeah. to do to ensure there are real consequences? So we, we have publicly asked for law enforcement to, uh, to enforce the, the public health measures where they can. Um, I think they have taken as much as they can a collaborative approach to that. But there have been a number of tickets that have been, um, that have been administered. I can't speak to as, uh, why some of those may have uh, not found their way through to a conviction. Um, that, that's more of a question, I suppose, for the Attorney General or the courts, the court process that occurs or the, the prosecution process that occurs. Um, but... Um, but we have asked um, law enforcement, either whether that be uh, our, our municipal police, our RCMP, as well as public health, has been doing uh, many investigations um, with respect to uh, you know any violations that are there. Um, so that that enforcement is happening. I can't speak to uh, you know why the the, uh, the the prosecutions may not follow through. Mr. Premier, yes. With regards to the vaccine rollout, phase two, in addition to the age categories, there's some specific groups right. that will be focused. Uh, why were those groups selected and not other specific groups such as, say, police officers or teachers? Yeah, so there, there are uh, very small groups that are selected. Again, that's done on, on the advice of, of our chief medical health officer. Um, but the reason there are not larger groups of, uh, for example, teachers, police officers included, is simply um, the, the, the age-based criteria. Uh, we all know that age is the number one factor in poor outcomes if you were to contract COVID. Um, that is the number one factor. The second is we, we need this plan to be able to deliver many thousands of vaccines per day, tens of thousands per week. So capacity uh, is a focus of the, of the, uh, the vaccination plan that we have. And that's why we have kept the age groups 
um, the way they are and as broad as we can so that the when we get our 300 plus vaccination clinics up and running plus the pharmacies plus maybe some of the community-based uh, groups that will be able to help with this um, we we will be able to get through uh, many, many thousands of vaccines in, in short order. And it looks like we're going to have to. If we're going to uh, achieve 6 million in the first quarter, that means we're going to get over 4 million in the last half of that first quarter as we approach the, the halfway point um, today. We are, capacity is going to be a paramount um, in delivering the vaccines and making them available to Saskatchewan people. It's un unfortunate in many ways. I, I, you know, I, 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 I think we'd all like to be able to include as many uh, frontline groups as we can, but it would be at a sacrifice in capacity. There was a group of protesters out in front okay. uh, protesting changes the Indian government. Okay. Farmers. Right. They're protesting here because they're hoping your government will reach out to the government of India and to put some pressure on them. Are you planning to do that? And if so, when and, and what would you say to the government? Well, yeah, I, we, we are in contact uh, from time to time uh, directly with uh, members of the government of India and, and uh, there is a, a move in, in India to move towards a, a more market-based um, agricultural system, moving away from the, the sustenance-based um, agricultural system, but that in a large part um, is the very basis of, of the Indian agricultural uh, the Indian agricultural industry now, and we've been over there and, and met with many farmers uh, in our in our missions, and now have a trade office uh, present in India as well. And we've greatly valued the the trading relationship back and forth that we have between Saskatchewan and India, and we have many similarities. And I, I, I think there there might be an opportunity here for Saskatchewan to really share our agricultural story and our march from many decades ago of being a sustenance-based uh, agricultural uh, industry here in Saskatchewan as we march towards market-based agriculture here, uh, ultimately in including um, uh, the removal of the Canadian Wheat Board a few years ago, which was viewed positively by the majority of the agricultural producers here in Saskatchewan, which was the last uh, piece to the, uh, uh, you know, to the, the government involvement in the marketing of agricultural products. And, um, it is, it is, uh, you know, created opportunities for us to increase our production, and now we are uh, one of the the highest producing agricultural uh, regions in the world. We have a high quality product that we sell very competitively, and I would say that innovation um, and technology has played a big part in making uh, Saskatchewan agricultural products one of the most sustainably produced in the world. We're very proud of of that fact, and it has created jobs. Um, jobs beyond primary agriculture. We have a technology industry, an agri-tech industry in Saskatchewan that is vibrant and, and booming. We have a whole urban agricultural industry that we didn't have decades ago. Um, in, if you think of the, the ag equipment dealers that we have in, in community after community and all of the, the salesmen and the, the, the mechanics and the parts people that work in those facilities, the product specialists that work in those facilities, the agronomists that work uh, in the in the crop production supply facilities we have viterra we have agt based right out of here out of out of regina that employ people um, right across the province not in primary agriculture but most certainly in what i call the the urban agricultural industry that we have so um, as, as painful as the and, and challenging as the discussion is in india I think Saskatchewan can provide an example of, uh, of, of moving uh, through the years uh, away from sustenance agriculture to producing more, um, decreasing your, your, your risks of, of, uh, of lack of food in your community and in your country, and ultimately uh, moving towards a market-based agriculture, agriculture system that provides opportunities for higher production and, and sustainability. Well, I, I, I'm, I'm a fan of, uh, of, of the WHL in general and, and a fan of a number of the players and, and the teams uh, within the WHL. And listen, this is a, this is a transition league where young men, um, for the most part, are, are transitioning from uh, you know, that, that minor hockey environment to semi-pro and ultimately putting their wares um, out there for professional teams to have a look at them and ultimately maybe draft them into, into the, the professional hockey league or the NHL. So it's an important league for more than just uh, my enjoyment or other fans' enjoyment. However, um, that, that, that's, in, that's uh, <laughs> great as well. Um, so, so I'm hopeful that they'd be able, and I know they've been involved with Dr. Shahab over the course of the last number of weeks, um, putting together what a safe rules of play uh, have been. I understand that a bubble is, is part of that. 
and I, I hope they're able to to bring that together on on behalf of the of the players um, and the opportunities that those young those young guys will uh, you have in furthering uh, their career. Many of them are from Saskatchewan and Western Canada. Um, these are, are organizations are big parts of the communities that they operate in. And uh, you know, I just wish them all the best, and I hope they can come to a decision very, very shortly. I understand it's in the the Board of Governors' hands now. So, sorry, what's that? Are you thinking about waiving the Phase Five rule and allowing some fans? Um, I, I don't know the details of what Dr. Shahab has worked with him. I, I, I would say I doubt it, but that that's without <laughs> that's a question for Dr. Shahab because I'm not aware of the details. Yeah. Okay.